Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Faces Issue 1. Luck runs thin. On the cover, Ryder Typhon and Carl speed through the streets on Ryder's motorcycle. Carl is hazy at the edges as parts of his insect hive lag behind the speed. The front wheel of the bike is superimposed with a coin made of a strange metal with an image of a wide, shadowy grin. In the skies above them, Violet Starling and Faye, in full costume, fly, barely keeping pace. We turn the page and our story begins. This issue opens up. It's a nice sunny afternoon, probably on a Saturday or Sunday, some weekend day. And we get an like an outside shot of the, what was the college's name? Uh, Moon, uh, Harbor. Moon Harbor College. Yeah, we get an outside shot of Moon Harbor uh, College. And then we just see a little, uh, does, does Faye cuss? I feel like Faye cuss is a lot. Fuck yeah. Okay. We, we just get like in like the pink word bubble to indicate off screen that it's Faye like coming from underground. Fuck. And then our next panel is um, Faye in her sanctuary. You said you have it like in a locked box in the containment. Uh, yeah, it, it's probably not a locked box. It's probably just a box, like a wooden box in the containment chamber. Okay. It has been causing trouble. You have it in this containment. It's not affecting anyone's powers when you're nearby, but it seems to just affect probability in the area around it. This particular fuck came from you lighting a match and lighting a stick of incense and then shaking out the match, tossing it to the trash can where it landed on a rat who ran off with it on its back and then into a, a hole like in a pile of books, lighting the books on fire. It's become a problem. <laughs> Things are constantly going wrong. Uh, which one of your team members is with you in your sanctuary right now? Uh, definitely Violet, maybe also Felix. And Carl... I imagine Carl can get in and out pretty quickly. So uh, if we want Carl to be there, Carl can be there quickly. Okay. I'm going to say it's Violet. Violet is in here with me. We're going to start there. Okay. okay. I'm probably laughing my ass off at the scene. So. Uh, I turn. I have a bucket of water. This is not the first time it's happened. And I've got a bucket of water sitting nearby. I uh, take the bucket of water tele uh, telepathically and toss it onto the pile of books. At the fire goes out. You kind of breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. These incidents have been very easy to fix, but they are growing in intensity and frequency. You're very much getting the idea that this is not a safe place for this. Uh, something's eventually going to happen while you're not here, and things aren't going to be here when you get back. <laughs> what do you do? Hey, bye. Yeah. I, I hate think... this thing. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I just I fucking hate it. Okay, it's mine now. Like, okay, no, I don't think that was the right option. I think we should probably figure out a plan. Vi, you can't carry this around if it's, like, affecting probability. You're the least likely one to stay in this realm should probability, like, completely break. I mean, I, we could just throw it into the bottom of the harbor, but I suppose that would summon Cthulhu, too. Yeah, um, I probably have a book on this somewhere, but a lot of them are a little trapped I'll right take now, the so... Maybe Actually, I should take this and bring this away from your books, because if you look through it, chances are we're going to not have a library to look at anymore. That's a really good point. Uh, do you want to see what uh, Felix can do about like carrying it in metal hands, or Carl coming in and guiding oh, it Carl. with not human hands? Seeing like if having Carl a... won't come near it. It brings off too much of a unnatural feel to him. Similar to uh, how animals act to uh, when uh, right before a huge storm hits land, they kind of just go all silent and go and back away in fear, you know. So he's a bit of a drama queen. Why don't we call Felix and have Felix come pop over? All right, cool, Felix, Carl, where are you all? I would say okay for for Felix. I'm going to say he's actually he's hanging out at the local juice bar. I would say maybe he just got done working out and then okay. he's hanging out at the juice bar when he gets the call from Faye. Um, I'm I'm currently a bit stalkerish about about Faye, so I'm kind of hanging out outside the sanctuary. Like I know she doesn't want me to know where it is, but I do know because I've been stalking her for a while. Kind of deal. <laughs> Love it. So are you like on campus or like down in the tunnels, the near the sanctuary? I think I'm near it on campus, and I don't think I'm really in the tunnels. 
So are you like hiding out in a ventilation or something? Well, not that close, but like, let's say I'm I'm close to the entry. Like, how? What's the entryway to the to the sanctuary? How do you access the entryway? There's an entryway in uh, my mom's office in the library building, and there's also an entryway mm -hmm. in the chapel. Those are the only two entries that I know of currently. Okay, so I'm I'm in the neighborhood of the chapel. Uh, so so uh, so I'm getting a phone call from Faye. Is that what's understand? What I'm understanding? Uh huh. There I you do, are. Do you believe your phone rings? All right, so I'm gonna answer the phone. Um, hey Faye, w what's up? Girl, hey, what's up? What's going on? I'm 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 here at the at the bar. What where, where, where are you at? You know that uh that place that we hang out sometimes the the. the... The secret one. I'm really good oh. at this whole undercover thing, uh, Felix. Uh, the hole in the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know where it's at. Uh, you, the hole you, in the ground. Uh, so remember that thing that I got last week? That, that that's unpredictable. The the pet that we got last week that's a little unpredictable. It, it it it's okay. This is a secure line. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, is is it doing something? Is it what what what's what's going on? I mean, it's not doing anything. It's just making everything else do everything. At that, that moment, Felix, through the phone, you hear a loud crash. As Violet, like, tossed the can into the trash, it bounced off the can the edge of the trash can, went flinging across the room, and, like, hit a shelf just in the right spot to knock the entire shelf down. What was cool. that? Fuck's sake. What in the what? Okay, just, just, give, just give me a few minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll be over there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the juice bar and uh, I, I guess the juice bar would be on campus because, you know, that's kind of where everything seems to be located. If that's where we want it to be. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to make my way over to I'm going to make my way over to the chapel uh, where I'm assuming I'll run into Carl. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so I'm, I guess I, I go up to the chapel. I see Carl and I'm like, uh, you all right, buddy? What are you, what are you doing? Uh, sure, I'm just hanging out, you know. In front of the church? Yeah, I'm studying religion. It's super fascinating. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, does anyone else know you're here? Oh, God, I hope not. I mean, um, I don't think so. <laughs> all right, all right, you, you come with me. Uh, I, I, I don't think Faye will have a problem. Just, just, just come on with me. Are you sure that Faye wants me to come in? Cause I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll, she'll be okay with you there. If you say so. I think we get a couple panels of like this elaborate tunnel system as you all make your way through. It's kind of a pain. And then we get to the not secret, but fairly disguised door that leads to the sanctuary and you just see a bit of smoke pouring out from below the next panel cutting inside is uh Bay and violet just like quickly trying to put out yet another fire caused by a weird happenstance events uh Faye, violet <laughs> <laughs> what what the <coughs> what's that <sighs> okay w why is everything on fire uh, <laughs> good question. There's something really strange about the fire. I don't know. Creeps me Coin out. Coin is fucking everything up, and I can't handle it. I just wanted to read in peace and study, and it's just making fires everywhere. Please take this god fucking thing out of here. I mean, I... I'll offer to take it off your hands, but I'll just dump it in the bay or something. <laughs> I don't care anymore. I don't get it out of here. But I don't want to touch the coin. I told you guys that I want anything to do with that coin. It's it's <sighs> your coin. Okay. Um. Okay. Violet, you're not getting the coin. Um. Do we not have some sort of container, like anything, to put the coin away? A lead box, even. <laughs> we uh we at that point get a panel that shows this ridiculously elaborate um like containment sigil room. And then just a small table with a wooden box with the coin sitting in it. So we get this, like, don't we have anything to contain it? And then just shows this incredibly elaborate containment room. I'm pretty sure Tupperware would just work fine, though. 
Uh, wait. Why Tupperware? Maybe Violet has a point and we have to throw it in the bay. Do we? But... I'd rather bury it. I think if we're going to get rid of it that way, like, let's, let's make it somewhere where we can get it back and that no one else can get it. Fine, let's bury it under the children's orphanage. Jeez. That sounds that's... like a really terrible idea. I that that's even worse. Why don't I take it? Um, or l- let me make a phone call. Let me see if I can't get us an actual lead box. Um, I'm sure there's got to be something on campus. Maybe even the bank has. Well, you're not calling outlet. Uh, but she she might know what to do. Do you uh. really want Saber to have access to this? No. No, but she can help us. Fine. You can call Outlet, but we're bringing the coin to her together, and we're not meeting her here. Fair. Fair enough. So, uh, let me call Outlet and see where will we meet. Where will we meet? Meet at the chapel? No, that's too close to here. I mean, Saber headquarters aren't far from here. We can go the, like, six blocks we have to go. We're going to Saber? I've never been to Saber. Should I wear shoes when we go to Saber? I can never no. figure out when to wear shoes. I'm actually going to look down <laughs> at Carl's feet and go, wait, you're not wearing shoes? Why aren't you wearing shoes? Oh, because I'm, I'm experimenting with like having four feet right now, and I only have two shoes. Makes okay, sense, but right? that doesn't explain why you've got two black socks and one pink. Oh, that's um, my fault. Uh, I accidentally washed some of their clothes earlier in my laundry and everything turns pink when it's with my clothes <laughs> i like the pink I, I like pink as a color me too <laughs> is it because you're a queen hey well we said we weren't gonna make those jokes anymore damn it violet it's, at this point at this point uh violet feels like two bee stings in um <laughs> <her neck. laughs> the power to casually sting in one um <laughs> so felix you were calling yeah, I'm going to call uh, Outlook and just kind of ask her if she ow, ask her if uh, she would like to meet us at the uh, in the Saber lobby. Maybe. Yeah, that actually sounds good. And I'm going to ask her if she could bring a box, a lead box. I I mean, I yeah, I can get a hold of one. But why? Just we need a lead box. That's don't ask why. It, it, it doesn't matter. We just need a lead box. He's got a radioactive condom he needs to store, so... Chop, chop. It's, pretty, it's pretty easy. If it's a lead box, it's going to sink faster into the bay. She, it, she seems confused and then just goes, Okay, I, I'm going to trust you on this one. This better not be a waste of my time. I'll, I'll see you there in 30 minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll be there. I mean, I'll... Yeah, we'll be there. I, I hang up the phone, like, right after I say that. <laughs> You're such a good actor, Felix. I'm not good at this! <sighs> you want to call her next time, Faye? Sure. My name's Violet, by the way. <laughs> Not you, Violet! Faye, you're calling her next time. I can call her. Violet can absolutely call her. I feel like they're hitting it off really well. I don't really want to talk to Alet right now. <laughs> I, I... I know. I know. Let's go to save her! Okay, so... Are, are, we, are we leaving now? Are we headed out? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Right, so, who's holding the box? What are we doing? Also, I think it's a better idea to have Violet carry it in the containy pack thing, or for me to float it in front of my face. I guess question one is, are you going as superheroes? I think I'm going as yeah, myself. Outlet probably only knows Felix and Alana as Faye and the Rider. Right, so she didn't get a call from Felix, she got a call from the Rider. I guess there would be a panel of you know, one, who would point that out? Would that be Faye pointing that out, or would that be Violet pointing that out? <laughs> I like that Felix isn't even, it's not even possible Felix thought of that. Someone's no, gotta no. fix this. I like <laughs> Felix <it>. is an idiot. <laughs> have, um, have I met anyone from Saber yet? I would say you you've met see? Outlet, and that's about it. <laughs> I've met okay. a handful of them. I think Faye would be the first one to point it out, and I'm just more like, I'm going to watch and see where this goes. <laughs> and I think if it doesn't go out, anywhere... I think I'd just start changing. Hmm. All right. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you change, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. 
<laughs> yeah, so what I... is uh, your transformation like? Um, okay, so it's kind of like in a casual form, like if I'm like trying to change quickly, I would just like, like I said, kind of flip my phone open and then just press the center button on my phone with my middle finger and then just say change Rider Typhon in like, it'd be like change Rider Typhon and then, you know, basically slam, not slam. I don't know if, if any of you guys have seen Common Rider, but it's like a, it's like I an have. elaborate pose kind of deal. Um, where I kind of cross my arms across my waist, like as I go, both go across my waist and then I bring them to my side real quickly. And, okay. um, basically the phone turns into the sword, which then immediately vanishes because I can summon it at will. Oh, okay. does the armor like build out or is it just boom, boom. And then the armor whoosh, right on you. Um, it's like a, it's like I'm engulfed in light. It's like, um, like it's the like a belt. Boy transformation. Yeah, it's a lot <laughs> like a magical girl, tra- magical boy transformation, and then boom, I'm covered in light, and now I'm wearing the armor. Now, okay, so one thing I would would say is when I'm in the writer form, my voice kind of modulates as well to kind of hide the fact that I'm not Felix. It, it carries the writer voice. Okay, and I don't. Really, I really can't do the voice, but it's got carries a different type of voice where my voice is deeper. Okay, I'm into it. And uh, is everyone going? Um, I'm gonna um, like swarm out and um, stop like slight events from happening because there's constantly like we only see the big ones where something actually catches fire, but there's like constantly like small little things around us going wrong. Like, I love very, it. Uh, yeah, I love this very, panel. Like one phase getting changed, and we got the uh, rider transformation. We've got um, Carl just like kind of zi- like. You know, some insects over here, like pushing this book back on the shelf right before it falls, and blah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm constantly putting out like small little things that are going wrong, like picking in, like you said, like a book that's falling, putting it back, and <laughs> I'm all over the place. I'm into it. I just uh, want to make fun of Kaido. It sounds because it sounds like every time he goes into uh his writer form, he hits puberty all over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so. It's like my voice gets deeper. Oh, okay, so um, how are you getting there? I'm flying. I can fly too. So I oh, well, I guess I rode my motorcycle over here. Um, and I guess what are you doing, Carl? He flies. <laughs> he's he's literally flies. <laughs> <laughs> B man, fly. Uh. I'm uh, I'm very susceptible to wind and stuff, so I don't tend to fly very far off the ground. Um, okay, but I can so, levitate and, and fly quite well if I want to. So, would you jump on the back of my my motorcycle? I really love riding your motorcycle because you're all <coughs> insect themed, right? Right. So I love it when I love you when you go into your suit. It, it, awesome. It's... Okay, so. Me and Carl are headed over there on my motorcycle. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bit of a fan girl. I ship the them. They're so the cute. This is the first time that Carl cute. actually ridden in a vehicle instead of being hit by one. Like um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hanging like slightly off the off the bike, like a dog would do in a car, and it's not a tongue, but it's like something is flapping. I like <laughs> the idea of uh, on the trip over there. We get a couple panels where. Um, the rider takes a really sharp, fast turn, and like we get panels with Carl, like bits of Carl kind of like lagging behind and then flying up quick to get back into form. So like Carl kind of like blurs out and then pushes back in on those sharp, fast turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> and I have, right, who's I got have... the box? I got the box. It's in my backpack. It's a comp- yeah. in a compressed space in my uh, anti gravity pack. I'm with Violet. I'm also whispering the entire time that Violet and I are flying behind Ryder and Carl. I'm like, oh my god, they're so cute together. Aren't they so cute together? At some point during the ride, I grab, like, Ryder's waist. Like, I'm like a teenage girl on, on the back of the Literally bike. squeal. <laughs> oh I'm, my I'm, I'm, I'm super giddy about being on a bike. I like it. I like it. So we get these... I think the panel we get right before you arrive is that, like, um, Carl's arm going around Ryder and then this big old smile on Carl's face. Uh, and then the next panel is the four of you arriving like 
onto the street that this outpost of uh, Saber is on. And there are police cars just all up in the front of the building. Um, people seem panicked, and the uh, front door of the building has been blown off. Hey, I know the street. I used to live here. Uh, guys, we, 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 um, well, we have a problem. Oh, do we? Didn't, couldn't tell, by the way, that there are explosions and police officers. Okay, I need you to roll to be snarky. Wait, what do I add for that? Is that by free? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you all doing? Uh, roll to be snarky. <laughs> <laughs> Roll to D6 burn. Uh, <laughs> I say D6 plus one. We'll call that my uh, danger. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess. Uh, okay, so. Okay, I get. I'm terrible at leading a team, but I guess I'm going to assume the leader position and be like, everyone, let's find out what's going on. Uh, Carl, can you. Well, shoot, Carl can't really fly. I'm like two steps behind you at this point, and I'm I'm mimicking everything you're doing. So I've kind of taken a hero, a, a semi heroic stance, and I have also my sword has been summoned um, to my side or in, into my hand. Okay, and I'm gonna be like, um, Faye, Violet, can you guys get above us? Uh, get above the building and see if anything's going on, or can you guys get a better view of what's going on? Because we're still on the opposite side of the of the cars, right? Of the cop cars. Yeah, yeah. You're a you're a distance away. You all can choose what that distance is. Uh, I'm gonna like uh, flood up as mm, probably about up to the second story of the building. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna look for any open windows or anything, any access points that aren't through the front. Okay, sure. Um, as you uh, fly up, let's say this is like a four story building. Um, there's office building windows, like the non-opening kind. Mm -hmm. Um, in the third floor, you see the, like, flicker of fire deeper in the building. Um, go ahead and roll to assess the situation. That's plus superior. That's a three. That is uh -oh. a three. Um, so you're getting the lay of the land watching this, and then suddenly a huge explosion rocks the third floor. All the windows shatter outward, and the entire floor is just engulfed in flames. Everyone sees this. Ryder, what do you do? The first thing I want to do is I want to look to Carl and say, Carl, stay back. We don't know how fire will affect you. I turn around to a random pedestrian and I go, stay back, sir. You don't know how the fire is going to affect you. <laughs> That's <laughs> actually perfect. The uh I'm the actually, just kind of stares at you and then turns back to look at the fire and kind of backs up a few steps. I kind of want to look at, I want to kind of uh, in, in like kind of look at Carl and be like, Carl, try to try to keep everyone safe out here. Uh, Violet, um, can you, okay, so I, I guess a, a good question would be was Faye close enough for this explosion to affect her? Uh, no. Okay. Then at this point, I'm kind of not not intentionally forgetting about Violet, but I'm going to kind of be a headstrong idiot and start running towards the building, like running towards the opening, uh, the front entrance of the building, kind of in an attempt awesome. to see if there's any way I can help, if there's any way I can help get out or anything like that. Cool. Um, Violet, what are you doing? I'm advising Jill, <coughs> uh, Carl, how to... Uh best to constrain, uh, constrain the civilians by telling them to take the police tape and border off the area to keep them from moving forwards. And I, I'm guessing he's going to misinterpret that. Carl? Yeah, I, um, I, I turn into a swarm of bees to, um, to quickly put tape around the whole area and people see like a swarm of bees and just start bolting everywhere. At which point, <laughs> I, at which point, I turn back into my regular form and um, try to be like more like Ryder and and do my everyone, everyone, stay calm, which just uh, no, aggra aggravates them even more. So it's kind of turning into chaos. But at least they stay away. Good. At least they I stay away from the scene. 
Yeah, people are kind of getting whipped up into a frenzy. Like, this is Saber. This is the place bad things aren't supposed to happen. Um, Ryder, so you run into the building. Um, in the building, you like in the on the first floor, um, which is mainly like you know you're in a reception area. You see, there's no fire, but there has been. Fire. There's scorch marks. Um, it appears to be like blasts of fire, not a spreading fire. There's like a big scorch mark here, a big scorch mark there, and from you don't hear much going on in the first floor, but you see several unconscious saber employees, not. Supers, just, you know, the office staff people who work there. Um, from above, you can hear uh, the fire starting to raid. What do you do? Um, I, is there any police presence inside the lobby, or are all the police outside? Uh, there isn't anyone, any inside. The police um, here tend to step back when it seems to be supervillains. Um, and they are assuming this is the work of some kind of supervillain because what common criminal would attack Saber itself? Okay. Um, so there's no supers in the lobby, bunch of unconscious people. Do I see stairs? Um, I assume an elevators would be broken because of the fire. Uh, do I see a staircase or any way yeah, to get up to the next floor? Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm actually going to yell to Violet. Uh, I'm going to be like, Violet! There's a bunch of unconscious people in here. Try to get them out. I'm headed upstairs. And then I'm going to run upstairs. I okay. don't know if Violet can hear me. Um, I, I think Violet can. Are you... It sounds like you're trying to provoke Violet. So go ahead and roll... Um, plus superior. Because basically, when you tell someone what to do, and you're trying to get them to do it. Oh, goodness. Oh, That's beautiful. We're doing real well. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> cool. Um, the listening audience, that was a two. Yeah. <laughs> one plus one plus zero. Excellent. Um, yeah, so you're you're heading upstairs. Um uh Violet, what are you doing? You hear this. So I do hear him. Or I yes. Yeah, you do hear him. Alright, so I tell uh Carl to do it instead, and I'm gonna fly up with Faye. And use my uh, sharpened eyes ability to assess the situation. Yep, you just get um, an extra list of questions. So go ahead and uh, roll plus superior. On an eight, you can ask one from the assess the situation list. Uh, you um, also have your extra questions there you can ask from as well. What's my best? I'm sorry, you get, you get one from the seven to nine list and you get one from your sharpened eyes list. It's your best way in. Yeah, what's my best way in? The easiest way in is through the broken windows, but it is on fire. So if, if you're careful, uh, your best way in is through the broken windows. And what would be handy to grab here? It's a saber facility. They surely have an armor. Um, right, I'll let so you think on that for a bit. And Faye, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to take one of the... Uh, one of the bars from the window when the window is blown out, like a steel bar. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna use my uh, telepathy to go and s I assume there's a f um fire hydrant on the ground nearby. Yeah, I'm gonna smash it open and then I'm gonna warp the water with telepathy to blast through the third floor and start putting out the fires. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. So roll plus freak. That's a twelve. Hey. Nice. Uh, for the record, that was a twelve. <laughs> so I want you to see. So you would. So are you imagining like just not? You just hit the top off of it, or? Uh, yeah, I smash the top of it off. All right, and then this like fountain of water erupts, and then you just force it into this, you know, stream that's going in through the window. Mm -hmm. Um, jumping back to Carl. The crowd is getting not angry, but there's a lot of pushing and shoving, and people can are I, quickly going to be getting hurt. Can I can I see can I see anyone any of the other people at this point? You're still outside, right? So you've got uh, Violet and Faye kind of flying above. Well, I guess 
Faye is focusing on this uh, fire hydrant. Violet is floating above you. I can see them, right? They're still yes. bastards looking on my skirt. Okay, so um, at this point, I, I kind of give up trying to do it like the talk, like being subtle, I guess, and, and social. Mm -hmm. So I just start hard harnessing the idea that all the people are scared of the bees, and I start sort of like like a herding dog. Start sort of, sort of like herding them in the direction I want and, and grouping them up. and Kind of like herding up the people away from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm both bringing them together to be more manageable and herding them away from the danger. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and unleash your power. So it's a roll plus freak. So I roll the 11, yeah. All right, so you kind of split off and just, you know, go into your full B form and start herding the crowd away. Um, it's actually quite easy. People, upon seeing a large swarm of bees, bee ants, um, just kind of start pushing away from the area. Uh, very quickly, you're going to have that all cleared out. Ryder, are you, what floor are you stopping at? Are you going straight up to the third once you f find the stairwell? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, I'm going to try to head straight up to the third floor, which is apparently now being flooded with water. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like that uh, after you pass the second floor, you start seeing like a small trickle of water start running down the steps. You're like, what the hell is happening? You are getting to that door. Violet, what are you doing? Um, so I'm thinking about using... I'm thinking about going through the path, uh, path that Faye just opened up using the water. I know that it's still uh, pushing water, but I feel like that's the best way to go. And oh yeah, and like with the with the fire being pushed back, going in through the windows is not nearly as dangerous yeah. as it was just a moment ago. Give me a second here. Okay, yeah, uh, I can jump right back to you actually, if you'd like. Um, yeah, that'd be good. So but I'm inside gonna... the building at the moment. So, so you're you're going inside. I'm going inside. You, you float down into the building, kind of like through a side, a window that the water is not rushing in through. Um, right. And in the middle of the room, uh, the, the room, you see Outlet uh, laying on the ground. She appears to be unconscious, but a quick look, she seems to still be breathing. And standing above her is a person. They are about six feet tall, and they are absolutely wreathed in like a dark red purple flame they don't really Color. have any features they're generally man shaped but the closer to the core of the body you look just ever moving fire which the artist has drawn to like represent like to like have the impression of eyes but it is just fire they upon seeing you uh turn look you in the eyes and say Oh, do you still have it? Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and TP Youth, and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator on Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. They can be found at T Youth Playwright on Twitter or T Youth94 on Instagram. Faces is GM by me, Anthony Sheets. Carl is played by Simon Meskins. You can find him on Twitter as Jill Bereka. Faye is played by T.P. Huth. Ryder Typhon is played by Kaido Kane. Kaido is a Twitch personality and loves their three mischievous cats. You can find them at the Versian on Twitter and as Kaido Kane on Twitch.tv. Violet Starling is played by Zweifang. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. The music in this issue is Black Vortex by Kevin McLeod. A link to his website and the license will be in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at moonharborcast. We're also on Instagram at moonharborheroes. If you enjoyed this issue, please leave us a review on iTunes and tell a friend. Word of mouth and five-star reviews are really the best way for us to keep bringing these stories to more people. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.